This is the panel saw that I built. It's based on uh, European style sliding panel saws. And I had owned, I never owned a European saw, but I owned a, a three different uh, more, uh, other styles of, of panel, of vertical panel saws. And uh, got so I liked the vertical panel saw use, but none of them really did what I needed, which was uh, reliable, repeatable, straight, square, and um, uh, cabinet cabinet grade cuts with uh, minimal chippings of the edges. If you, you go to the hardware store or a lumber yard or whatever, they'll, they'll cut you up stuff on a panel saw, and sometimes those can be set up square. The problem is that the chipping is usually a pretty big problem, making making it so you have to break up your plywood sheets and then you have to recut them on the table saw, and I wanted to get away from that. So I designed this panel saw. Another advantage of a vertical saw is that uh, if you're like me, you're always like, you are always got junk on your table saw or whatever, and it's just hard to make room to break up whole panels. And it's also, it's, it's difficult to break up whole panels on a, on a table saw unless you have a really big setup with, with big outfeed tables and stuff. It's really hard to break those up accurately. So this vertical system allows the panel saw to always be ready to go because it's not covered with junk. And uh, so what you do, it's 12 feet wide, and uh, so what I do if I wanted to uh, prepare a full sheet of plywood, that's a four by eight sheet. I've got a tape measure here that I'm gonna to use to demonstrate some things. I get the carriage out of the way. So I would bring my four by eight sheet in here and set it down right here. And you can see that I have set it right down here in the middle. So here's eight, here's eight feet where, where my hand is, right to there. So I got a couple feet on either side, um, being a 12 foot long panel. So I move that there. Then I slide the panel. Say I want to square the edges of the panel. I slide the panel all the way. So it registers here, right? And then I move to the first cross cut position. Move the saw here, move the saw carriage up a little bit. And I lock the saw, I lock the thing up here. I'll, show, I'll, I'll, I'll come up closer uh, later, I'll move the camera by hand and uh, show how it works. Place the saw here, turn on the dust collector. The dust collection is very good. A very acceptable. Uh, I had to build my own shroud for the saw, and once I did that, I hooked up my dust collector. The dust collection was really good. Um, and then I pull it through this screw, and then that cut that cuts made off that edge of the plywood. Then, so say I want to cut a six foot long. I want to cut the sheet of plywood down to six feet long. Then what I would do, so I leave the plywood in place for now. Move the saw carriage over to second position. Lock it in place here. Then slide the plywood over here to the two foot mark. And I would set a stop here. So I've got these flip stops. I would set my stop and I would butt the plywood up against the stop. That's, a, that's about six feet, I'm, I'm just approximating. But, and then, I could cut the other saw. So they're straight and square and parallel and six feet long. And you can see how fast it went, which is you know just just not very long. Not very long. Just a matter of seconds I've got that sheet. And the sheet's still up there. So then say I want to rip it down to 24 inch long sides for you know the sides of a pantry. Okay? So bring this up again. Unlock that. here and I set it to 24. I don't have scales yet for this operation. I haven't got those installed. Set it for 24. So we'll imagine that this wrap rips it in half. Oh, you see I turn this, lock this, and then I have this system and this is this is a block that keeps the knob from rotating when I don't want it to. Tighten this knob. 
which pulls a nut up snug within this extrusion and locks the carriage from moving up and down this way. Very snug. And then I turn on the saw and I saw through this panel. I removed the excess piece, so I'm cutting into that too. So then I've got my pantry sides cut with just a, a minimum of that fuss and with only handling the full sheet once. Um, so I'm not dropping sheets, I'm not, I'm getting very straight cuts, <laughs> I'm getting consistency, I've got stops, i got repeatability, so pretty slick. Um, it was a lot of work to make, a lot of work to figure out. Um, knowing what I learned about building it, I could do it a lot quicker uh, now. And of course, you know, if you, did, if you wanted to build such a saw and you did it exactly the way I did it, you'd be spending a pretty penny because these extrusions are not cheap, and I managed to find them um, on surplus uh, at a very good price, and, and that's, that's not uh, something that can be easily replicated. However, everything else can, can be replicated. This is a big Lazy Susan. There's an aluminum plate here, the shroud you make yourself. The saw is a very simple DeWalt thing that I got to use for like 50 bucks. You see these clamps. These are linear bearings, linear uh, rails that I got off of uh, eBay. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter that, that they're different lengths. Because I, I don't have a, I didn't get like a seven foot long linear rail. I got like a, like a four and a half foot one and then like a two foot one. And that worked. I just butted them together and, and the linear bearings worked right. So that's cramped, clamped down pretty tight there. And then I put this in there to keep that moving. So then we're sliding again. All right, so uh, linear, linear bearings, there's a, there's a gap here you can see, you know, but it's, it's not a big deal. They slide over there really smoothly. Um, and uh, you can see I used uh, PVC. I used rain pipe for the, the counterweight slides inside here. It weighs about 30 pounds. And this is another piece of ABS plastic that was just convenient as a way to route, route the hose. This cord management is important and it's very accessible. This gets down, I bumped my head into it, but it's not really a big deal. Um, you can see the two pulleys up here that help it go into the counterweight. It could be done with one big pulley, and if I did it over again, that's what I would use. I'd, but that, the, I had these on hand and I managed to use them. Uh, these are gate wheels. Um, and on top of this, there is an uh, a, a, a angle iron, and the gate wheel's right on that. And it is screwed or bolted to the, uh, the top of the extrusion. You know, if, and if I was doing it over again, I would probably use like three inch square steel uh, parts. You know, uh, it would be possible maybe to build a beam and do this out of wood. But it's a lot of engineering and it's a lot of work to get it really straight. And I think you can get it really straighter, which is off the shelf metal easier. So that might be an area if you wanted to build a saw like this to really look at uh, working with some heavy metal material instead of trying to do it with wood. These slots are maneuverable, like this, are removable, uh, removable in case I want to, don't want to cut into the slat when I'm ripping, which could be an issue. Um, and it's designed to actually, eventually, the, the, these boards in here, I mean, it's, they're kind of heavy, so they're hard to lift, lift up by hand, but they slide inside these, these metal channels. And these metal channels are things I got at the hardware store, they're fence posts. And these boards will slide up. Um, and the idea is that uh, I can use a air pneumatic uh, pistons. I could get four of them and I could bump up, bump, ship this grid like two inches or whatever, put a different grid in there and ship it so the grid never gets cut into. And that's a cool thing I may add at a later, at a later date. Um, stop system was, uh, I wrote somewhere about how to, how to do this. The, the, this is really critical setting up the bait. The, uh, I mean, this doesn't look like much. <laughs> it's a very unflashy part of the saw, but getting, the, getting this all engineered right, uh, the surface that, uh, that your plywood rests on, that's just really important because it has to be parallel to the upper roll, uh, upper, upper rail. Then this is squared. Oh, and I'm saying these are gate wheels, and this is a metal plate that holds them in. And it's, this is adjusted square with the square, and then fine adjustment was achieved by inserting shims uh, on this side, which just adjusts it just, just a, a hair, just to get it perfectly square. And it cuts square. It cuts really square. Um, and I, it, 
Yeah, it's 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 nice. It's nice. It really it really turned out well. Uh, what else can I tell you, you about it? I'll, I'll get up closer with the camera and show you some more. Maybe at some point I'll publish some plans about how to do this, but but uh, I'm not that great at drawing plans or anything, so I'll have to think about it. See this twisting mechanism? It locks. This is the stopping mecha stop mechanism right there. You see I've got a, a, a bolt here that's tapped into here and then there's another bolt that's, that's here that's tapped into a sh piece of aluminum that's on this this wood block. It's kind of low tech but the, they bol the both sides have a have a bolt alright and this one's got one. See it goes against that. So with just some tweaking I, I tuned the saw to cut square in both directions. Um, underneath, underneath, I used a um, I used a uh, zero clearance plate that I got from uh, Eureka Zone. So I, I'm sure that they're 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 happy that I'm uh, plugging their product, which is pretty cool, and helps it make. This is a an extra one, and you can get a circular saw system from them. Um, Easy Smart uh, guided circular saw, and this is like the plate that I use to make a zero clearance. Uh, insert to control chipping for the shoe that rides on the on the work and that's how this saw one of the ways this saw differs from other panel saws is that this goes up and down it's important that the saw ride on the surface of the work um, and all these linear bearings and stuff like that allow that to happen uh, you could see that, that, that there's a uh, well there, there's the uh, stop system with these little stops that I made, flip stops, in two positions, and these these ones, these upper ones, they'll be set in forget stops, and then there's a couple couple lower ones that are just for regular moving around. I haven't added scales there yet either. This is a metal rail down here. That's just a piece of uh, angle iron that's uh, tapped into these metal things. You know, wood could be used for these parts too, at the base, and then there's a piece of UHMW, which is high 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 density plastic. Um, that I just kind of MacGyvered this to get it. So the beam is uh, is parallel to to the working surface of the plane. So so the the saw uh, cuts straight, you know, and uh, well, cuts straight in all three axes. And as you can see, the frame has like holes in it. I've got stuff stored behind it because in my shop there's never never enough room for for machinery and tools and work. Um, the extrusions are Bosch Rexroth extrusions, and as I said, they cost about you know if you buy them, you can get them in lengths of about 18 feet, and they cost about 600 bucks. So those are pretty spendy. Uh, and those are the corners where they join, and I have a couple of those gussets attaching them together. Um, that's about it. Uh, it's a lot of work to make, uh, but totally worth it to have it have it always ready to break up a big sheet of ply and I'll just cu cross cut small boards with it and stuff like that if I don't want to set up set up another saw or clean off my table saw or whatever um, and it does it really fast and the dust collection is quite good and the quality of cuts in terms of squareness is very good and uh, it saves a lot of space and it saves a lot of time so I hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, I'm gonna have to end the video because I got a 15 minute limit but uh, yeah, please leave comments or whatever, and uh, you know maybe at some point I'll drop some plans and make those those available. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.